Hello everyone and welcome to the final flight in Around the World in 80 Planes in X-Plane 11 and for this flight I am flying the T-38 by JCS. It is a payware plane, uh, though a fairly affordable one, and I am flying it with a NASA livery because we are flying from Atlanta to Cape Canaveral. Cape Canaveral was where I started all the flights and that is where I intend to finish. Um, in this version the color on the vertical stabilizer might need some adjusting. I feel like, uh, yeah, it definitely does. So again, this is the cockpit, fairly straightforward. And I'll try and delay as much as possible because we're really close to the end of the Apollo 13 audio when they finally splash down and everything. But I think the flight is not that long. So, uh, you know, not long enough for me to get to the end of the audio or at least uh, to where they splash down. So. I'll try and take my time and we'll do some sightseeing, maybe divert to Tampa and Orlando a little bit, but ultimately I'll end up at Cape Canaveral at some time and it may be too soon. We'll see. I've tried to trim out the audio as much as I could, but yeah, uh, so we're still a ways away. So anyway, I'm starting up the Apollo 13 audio which we have been listening to. We started the series with Paul 12. All right, so here we go. Okay, uh, real fine. You might uh, tell them that uh, when we get to that point, we have some, uh, some stars with corresponding shafts and trunnion angles. So in the left channel is the Capcom talking to the crew, and the right channel is Mission Control. Oh, we're a little bit heavy, huh? Come on, little guy. We ought to try this SCS Logic Power 2-3, and as much as it's called... I am carrying a lot of fuel, so... And are you tracking us, and do you have the results of that last mid-court? Very nimble, of course. You got the SCS Logic Power 2-3 called out again at 110, right? Right. Okay. So we could open that and leave that open, and it'll be closed again at 110. I think we'll keep it low. Though I might not be carrying enough fuel for that. We'll probably not do afterburner stuff. Go ahead, Capcom. While I'm calling up the uh, the heater switches to him, uh, he asked about. Well, the I guess we can take a quick look at downtown once again before yeah, moving on. Got it was the course course course. We got him nailed within a half a foot per second. Roger. Go ahead, Aquarius. I just said, Joe, it feels nice to use a hand controller again. Oh, Roger that. Uh, Fido says he's got you nailed within a half a foot per second. Uh, the mid course looked real good. I think I started a little bit okay. into where and, we uh, were uh, last got, time. Uh, two things we'd like Jack to do in the command module uh, to uh, ease the load on uh, main A. One of them is to verify or turn the CMRCS heater switch to off. We're done with that, and even though the circuit breakers are pulled, the uh, the switches might be drawn a little current. And the second one is we'd like him to turn FCS logic power 2 slash 3 to off. We don't need it now. It's called up in the checklist at the appropriate time, and uh, we'd like him to turn that off. Over. Okay, I'll tell uh, Jack to uh, check the... We're going faster than we, strictly speaking, ought to, but... And also to it's fine. That's correct. Again, I'm sort of suspicious of this tower right here that has just auto gen gone wrong or something. But maybe it's supposed to be there. That red tower looks interesting. Let's quickly summarize the meaning of some of those numbers. I wonder what that's about. At, uh, okay, on to our, well not straight to our destination. I think we'll go to Tampa first and then go across. There is a highway to follow, obviously. Velocity at entry interface of uh, 36,211 feet per second and an entry angle of minus 6.51 
time of uh, entry interface, uh, 142 hours, 40 minutes, 40 seconds ground elapsed time. Begin blackout, uh, 17 seconds uh, following entry interface. End blackout, uh, 3 minutes, 22 seconds following entry interface. De deployment of the drogue chutes at uh, 8 minutes, 14 seconds. Our digital display now shows Apollo 13 at a distance of 30,226 nautical miles away uh, with a velocity of 11,290 feet per second. We're at uh, 138 hours, 56 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, here's an Aquarius, Gull Aquarius. Okay, uh, how about if I hold a pitch attitude of about 115 instead of about 9-1? Uh, I think Jack could uh, use the object a little bit better at that angle. How about that, guys? All right, fine. Just so we... Uh, Jim, uh, that's perfectly okay with us uh, if it looks good for stars. Yep, a little bit stuttery there. He just looked at him briefly. I'm going to have to look at it a little bit better here. Okay, It'll be uh, Interstate uh, 75, uh, it looks like. Our uh, shaft and trunnion angles we were going to pass them don't uh, mean anything, but it's more important that he have a good star field. Aquarius, Houston. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Jim, uh, we, uh, we've we been talking about your uh, going to a, a different attitude than the, uh, than the pad attitude for better star field vision out the command module. And uh, what we'd like to have you do is this. If you can uh, predict now or sometime soon uh, what attitude it is that you'd like to hold at that time, and then go to that attitude now, we'd like to be able to compute the course aligned gimbal angles for the CSM. And we can do that if you go to the selected attitude, hold it, Call up a Verbo 6, now 20, and read us your LEM gimbal angles. We can take those and compute CSM course aligned gimbal angles on the assumption that when we get back into the CSM course aligned, you will return to that selected attitude. Does that sound OK? Over? Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, I'll try to hold uh, the attitude we select directly uh, while you're giving him the course aligned attitude. So I'm not too sure. What uh, what's the best attitude? I'm going to ask Jack again. With 115 is sufficient for him. Okay, you can take some time figuring out the the best attitude, and then you won't have to hold it all the way from now until then. If if you just get back to it. Ah, uh, clouds. They are so unpredictable uh, sometimes. Uh, Tell him you from flight. Jack would like to know uh, what no. constellations are in his our scanning telescope field of view uh, uh, at uh, uh, an attitude of about 105. Uh, 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 okay, uh, uh, we'll uh, sure uh, give it a go. As I said, we uh, we have some stars. Uh, uh, they're not they're not centered uh, with the shaft and trunnion zero. Let us take a quick yeah, look at uh, 105 to really shaft back. and trunnion zero and see if we can get you an answer. I don't think so. What do you know? I queried span on the this is probably a good altitude. Okay, let's see with the margin we got. Uh, telling you that the best I thing to do might be to make sure and pull it off when it hits down there. Go ahead. Uh, Rod, these, uh, none of these stars will be exactly centered, but uh, at a pitch attitude of... Uh, so this is Interstate 75 below us. That uh, Vega, Altair, you really think it's going to contribute that much to the load right now? And uh, Dana uh, would all be in the telescope nine. field of view. And uh, the first three were also in view at, uh, at the 91 degree pitch. So he should be able to, uh, to, to see uh, one or more of those four stars. Over. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and uh, Jim, I can give him shaft and trunnions. Uh, okay, tell me what you want to do. If uh, he's interested. Tell him you. Any other reconfiguration? Okay, why don't you give us the and shaft and uh, trunnions for, uh, say, uh, Altair? 
At 115, I'll go there and I'll see that you pick it up. Okay, real fine. At 115 degrees of pitch, Altair, shaft 274, Trunnion 22.2, over. Roger, shaft 274, 22.2. That's confirmed. We're over Locust Grove, which doesn't sound like a very appetizing place. I mean, how would you call a place Locust Grove anyway? Only about one amp now, and I think it'd probably be a good idea to get it offline. Okay, so uh, we'll have battery three to off reset. There's a town called Experiment somewhere off to our right. <laughs> Well, at least they're not uh, just taking okay, uh, names of other cities. There, uh, we have we show battery three uh, only drawn about an amp, and we think it's probably time to get it off the line. Battery three. To Though there is an Alps, but there's a lot of interesting names around here: Blackjack, um, Nebulon, Rover. There's a place called Rover. Um, Box battery Ankle. Uh, sunny side is pretty basic, but not bad. Definitely not bad. What's that, Capcom? Yeah, he asked, how's our power consumption? Looking good. Uh, if you want to give him some numbers right now, we're predicting about at the present power level around 11.8 amp hours and batteries left in the limb. Okay, I didn't actually want to get this side. That was about 15 minutes ago. That's right, that's ours. Okay, uh, Aquarius Houston, uh, with the uh, present uh, amount of power you've got in the limb, which is over 500 amp hours, and the uh, rate you're using them, we figure you've got almost 12 hours of power left. 12 hours, huh? We could re-enter with it. That's the firm. 12 hours. enough for two touch and goes and a full stop, Jim. <laughs> That's right, Joe. If you can dig a cleaner like clone cleaner, I could might hit it. <laughs> okay. Jack reports that he thinks he can see out Oh, there. interesting little cloud wisp to our left. Don't often see those. He says he thinks he can see out there. Okay, I'll take back the very, but I'll I'll leave the good. <laughs> uh, this town is called Foresight. Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, we're now at uh, 139 hours, uh, tw 19 minutes into the flight. Our uh, digital displays show uh, the Apollo 13 spacecraft at a distance of 27,698 nautical miles away from Earth. Velocity increasing, uh, now rating 11,779 feet per second. As you uh, heard the discussion earlier, uh, limb uh, descent battery number three has uh, been taken off the line. Uh, five batteries, uh, including two in the ascent stage, are now on the line. Uh, this. Uh, oh, we're out of photo scenery here. That's a shame. To uh, quickly recap uh, what has transpired earlier, the uh, mid-course uh, burn number seven uh, was performed as uh, scheduled at uh, 137 hours, uh, 39 minutes, uh, 48 seconds into the flight. This uh, was a burn of 23 seconds in duration uh, with a delta V of uh, three feet per second. Our uh, flight dynamics uh, tracking confirms that the burn uh, was performed uh, precisely as planned. Command module pilot uh, Jack Schweigert is now in the command module. Earlier he powered up uh, main bus B and powered up uh, some of the equipment uh, and his checkout process the uh, command module computer was verified as looking good. Service module separation occurred uh, a little earlier than planned. Of course, this is not a time-critical event. 
Jim Lovell decided to separate from the service module uh, some eight minutes in advance of uh, that time previously considered. Uh, we copied a separation time. Uh, Houston, Aquarius. Aquarius, Houston, go. Uh, I ran back there to take a look and see what I could see in, this, in the uh, scanning telescope. It looks pretty grim back there right now. Might be that we had to go with the uh, course of line and maybe uh, computation and some final line docking angles if we have time. Okay, uh, we'd like to do that too. Uh, Town to our Ford minute. left uh, is Macon, flight. Macon, Georgia. Go That's, uh, we cannot do that. That's going backwards for us on the torque angle. It's not like the normal uh, lambda, uh, CSM to lamb torque angle. Oh. We, should be okay we copied uh, service you know, module separation at 138 line. hours, 2 minutes, 8 seconds, uh, ground elapsed time. Yeah, what Jim Lovell uh, vivid, vividly about, described uh, the condition of the service time. module as, as uh, Apollo 13 grim, moved away up. from it, okay, as having one whole side missing. Oh, that helps. Fred Hayes then reported that the uh, service There we go, Macon, Georgia. <laughs> now, now we can see more buildings. Going, why, why do we see only a few? Ahead, well, uh, it was doing a little bit too much to, work uh, getting rid of the buildings there. Bring up the command module batteries at uh, I don't believe you're coming through two and a half hours now. prior to uh, entry interface. Uh, a lot of noise somewhere. Some considerably in advance of uh, what would transpire uh, if we had a uh, sure Jack, normal mission. Me. The batteries are normally brought on the line about uh, 30 minutes prior to entry interface. Right now, uh, our clock is counting down to uh, lunar module jettison, and we show a time of uh, two hours, 17 minutes uh, from this time. We're at 139 hours, uh, 23 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Aquarius, Houston, are you ready? I'll read you loud and clear. Okay. Uh what we'd like to do is, Jim, is we'll go ahead and get the course aligned to the gimbal angles that, uh, that you're going to be holding for us. And we'll get the platform up. And then when you call P-52 and you use pick a pair, it probably won't be close enough to put the star in the second. Calling flight but second. No. No. We don't have a bright star in the general vicinity. Like general vicinity Suit is, really? Uh, two to three degrees to close from the center of the telescope. So that you have some clue as to which way to go, then the identification problem shouldn't present much of a, of a difficulty. And once you get the thing in the section, then you can go ahead and treat it like any other pick of Got to go uh, a little bit higher things, since it's not uh, photo scenery around here. There's all sorts of bright objects floating around us. Uh, and also that uh, Ken staring at the uh, part of, uh, of Aquarius that's just reflecting light like that. Uh, we can give it a try, there's no problem there. If we can see it, we'll get it. Okay, and in the event that that doesn't work, we're standing by with the uh, original set of uh, left FDAI angles to fly through that'll point the command module objects at the moon and the uh, sun. That's our recommendation. So we can always go back to that. Okay. Telling you from flight, you want to verify the suit relief valve is in the closed position, right? That's the primary. Cap down from flight. Roger that. Suit relief valve verifying close. Roger. It's apparently an auto now. And Aquarius Houston, we'd like you to verify the suit relief valve to close. Over. Verify. Half down to the slide. Go, Floyd. Hey, one other item. I don't know if uh, GNC gave it to you. Okay, uh, Houston, Aquarius. Aquarius, Houston, go. We'll go with the original 91 uh, degree angle uh, if you have the stars figured out and the course line angle for it. Uh, okay, roger that, Jim. Uh, and then at, uh, at your convenience here, we'd like you to uh, go to that attitude as close as you can get and uh, call up a uh, noun 20 for us. Okay, uh, it works now. You copy okay. guidance? Roger, fine. Uh, Houston Aquarius. 
Go ahead, Aquarius. Okay, I take it that if, uh, if Jack cannot see stars at this attitude, after you give the course the line angles, we're just not going to read down to you our gimbal angles and have you figure out a uh, target angle for Jack. Uh, but you want him to do uh, a study on the moon and the, uh, and the sun, is that correct? You want to do uh, That's uh, roughly correct, Jim. Uh, uh, Jack will course align at that attitude. This is what we're having you maneuver to the uh, to that attitude for. We're going to compute course align gimbal angles and pass them up to him. And the first thing he'll do when he gets there, per his checklist, is to course align his his platform. Uh, then he'll go into the P-52, and if he can't see stars. We will quickly pass up to you the uh, your FDAI angles to put him in the moon view attitude, and he'll do his P-52 on the moon, then have you maneuver to the sun and complete the P-52 on the sun. Okay, but I'm going to have to maneuver to the moon to help out. Oh, that's a, that's affirmative. If he can't see stars at the uh, at the uh, SEP attitude that that you'll be holding. Uh, You'll have to maneuver to the moon attitude and then to the sun attitude for him. Aquarius Houston. Go ahead. Just like to uh, to mention that uh, even if for some reason we actually uh, this strategy of going higher the over the, the stock scenery might be the wrong way around. We'll have a, a platform course aligned it certainly the, would look better lower down than it is a bit more repetitive up well, here, but, my feelings too. Okay. well, anyway. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. No Interstate 75 stood to our right there. Two minutes now to the flight. Apollo 13 is presently 25,227 nautical miles out from Earth. The stock scene, I mean, the photo scenery sure makes the interstates a lot more distinct and easy to follow. Because normally they have a lot of stuff around them. Sound walls and stuff. Fairly well delineated. Sightings are used as a reference in platform alignment. That's a computer platform. The problem caused by uh, sunlight uh, reflecting off the uh, surface of the lunar module and uh, this reflection getting into the optics and washing out uh, the view of the stars. If a command module pilot uh, Schweiger... That town down there is uh, Unadilla? Guidance, have you got the data to, uh, His star sighting line. efforts, uh, Jim uh, will uh, maneuver... Or Unadilla? Maybe with the lunar module to uh, still, uh, give him the opportunity to sight off the uh, sun and moon. Pitch. What do you need? No We're at uh, 139 hours, uh, 42 minutes, to continuing to monitor. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Aquarius, Houston. Hello there, Houston. Hi. Uh, Jim, we, uh, we've we uh, gone ahead and computed the uh, CSM course aligned gimbal angles based on your being at the uh, service module uh, SEP attitude at the time that uh, Jack cranks up the computer and, uh, and course aligns the IMU. That is, we assume that you're going to be at roll zero pitch 091, yaw zero. And uh, if you concur on that, I'd like to pass up the angles for uh, for Jack to have. Okay, I'll be there to the best of my ability. Good show. You ready to copy? Go ahead. Okay, CSM course align angles. Roll plus Two nine or eight decimal nine five pitch plus two seven one decimal three zero yaw plus zero 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 
decimal two zero. Okay, the command module uh, angles will be roll two nine eight nine five, pitch two seven one three zero, and yaw zero 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 two zero. That's affirmative, and that's for his uh, verb forty one noun twenty when he gets there. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 139 hours, uh, 53 minutes now to the flight of Apollo 13. Our display shows uh, this 13 spacecraft at 23,873 nautical miles uh, now out from Earth. Less than uh, 20 minutes uh, from this time, uh, Jack Schweikert aboard the command module will start drawing power uh, from the uh, three uh, command module entry uh, batteries. With this event forthcoming, uh, Flight Director Gene Krantz uh, advised his flight control team on the loop to review all checklist procedures for power transfer. You may recall that uh, yesterday, the entry batteries A and B were recharged uh, from the limb Presently, there are uh, 118 amp hours uh, showing uh, for the three uh, entry batteries on the command module. Uh, this is within two uh, amp hours uh, of the uh, liftoff number. Fire control. control, control. We're at uh, 139 hours, uh, 55 minutes into the flight, and this is now. Apollo Control so Houston. Go to auto and We'll have some very inefficient use of the RCS here. Okay. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 139 hours, 59 Oops. minutes now to the flight of Apollo 13. We uh, presently show Apollo 13 at 23,196 nautical miles away from Earth and uh, with a speed of 12,798 feet per second. The uh, retro fire officer advised uh, flight director Gene Krantz that our entry times are holding quite firm. There's only a one second change in uh, ground elapsed time for entry interface. Uh, we're now looking at uh, 142 hours, 40 minutes, uh, 39 seconds for time of entry into the Earth's atmosphere. And at a velocity uh, of 36,211 feet per second and an entry angle of 6.5, minus 6.5 degrees. We're at 140 hours now into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Aquarius, Houston, over. Go ahead, uh, Houston Aquarius, here. Okay, Jim, we're getting about uh, nine minutes from... Still over uh, Georgia right now. Sorry for not Michael talking Cara. very much, but... Mm, and, uh, we wanted to, sort uh, of a nondescript uh, landscape right now. ...for Jack's benefit that... Uh, Although the batteries are looking real good, uh, in case they're cool and probably uh, ought to be a little bit more descriptive. I see a lot of little. We'd like them to monitor main bus bits of water on the map. Lots of little uh, lakes and pools and such. Or above during the power up procedure, and if it falls below, we'll have a couple circuit breakers for them that uh, that will solve the problem. Probably looks a little bit better than what we have right there now. Okay, I think it's your also monitoring main bus bullets. Uh, negative, not in the command module at this time because we don't call up uh, telemetry until uh, a little bit later on. Inside here, uh, so that's right, I forgot. we're at okay, Mach 0.68, certainly not too fast at all. What do you say, Frank? Yeah, go ahead. Aquarius Houston. Go ahead. Okay, uh, you're go to start uh, powering up the command module. Right now, we're starting now. Okay. Uh, 
Town to our left is Tifton. Possibly Phillipsburg. Both names are right there. Okay, Roger, stand by. Who's low tap? They're good to continue. Configuration look good? Roger. Do you want them to continue? continue? Okay, press on. Press. Okay, that's, uh, that's it, Joe. Okay, real good. Good, good, fine. Okay. Follow Control Houston, uh, 140 hours, 16 minutes, uh, DSM, go down on the flight, uh, network, uh, Aquarius Houston. Go ahead. Roger, we uh, have Command Module AOS, request Omni Charlie in the CM, over. Omni Charlie, okay, stand by. That call up from Joe Kerwin, uh, confirming that uh, Honeysuckle uh, up. has acquisition okay. of signal on the command module S band. We're at 140 hours, 16 minutes, Apollo 13, now that 21,000. That was uh, sent to a new onboard communications system known as Yelling Through the Tunnel. <laughs> the 1MC. Yeah, that's good. I've got Fred up there with uh, Jack Play now, helping to power up the CM and I'm uh, going to Carbon two way. Understand, Jim. Roger. Carbon two way. All we need now, network, is some data. Probably. Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, 140 hours, 18 minutes uh, now to the flight. Uh, that uh, last report uh, from spacecraft commander Jim Lovell. Reporting that uh, Fred Hayes uh, now in the command module helping Jack Swigert to uh, power up the system. The uh, uh, nominal timeline uh, called for Roland Hayes uh, to transfer uh, into the lunar module at about uh, minus one hour 30 minutes uh, from time of entry interface. So lunar module pilot Hayes uh, has stepped ahead slightly in that timeline. We now show sir. that uh, we're one hour, uh, 22 Flight minutes uh, away uh, from time of uh, okay. jettison of the lunar module. We're at 140 hours, 19 minutes into the flight. Uh, I'm and trying to figure out if that's the borderline. I think that's photo scenery up ahead. I think I'm pretty much covered Florida on, in the photo scenery. So, we're pretty close to Florida now. For Georgia, I mainly did the coast and Atlanta area, some other bits, but did not get the I-75 corridor. However, and looking over some of the command module displays, it uh, appears... Here's an Aquarius Odyssey is trying to call. Can you read them? Uh, negative. Don't read Odyssey yet. Has he got his uh, uh, intercom panel uh, configured? I'll double check. Uh, they're hearing you. Okay, good deal. I don't hear him yet. It appears to be a little chilly uh, inside the command module cabin at the present time. Uh, we Are have you a reading of 38 a, uh, degrees. We just uh, lost. We have static data. Roger. I have the standby for a bit, Capcom. Stand by for just one minute, Jim. You got a high bit rate? Yep. Enco? Enco from flight. Flight Enco, evidently it's not coming on here with the command, so let's put the power amp switch to low on the spacecraft. I got my little bit right We got a lot of things to do here. The power amp isn't coming on. Uh, All right, it's low? Yeah. Okay, Aquarius Space Houston track. recommend in Odyssey that he uh, switch the, the power uh, amplifier flag. to low, over. Yeah, it's great. Power amplifier to low. Flight back flag is great. 
Verified talk back great, yeah. It's been switched below, Houston. Roger. Okay, uh, verify the power amp talkback is gray, Jim. Okay. That's verified. Okay. Any suggestions, income? We may have to go to high power air flight. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking about whether to descend or not, since we have some more detail down there. Oop, a little bit choppy there. Um, well, we'll go down a bit, I think. Raj, Capcom, we're standing by for the EMOT. Aquarius, Houston. Go ahead. We have high bit rate. We are standing by for the VERP 74 enter in the EMOD dump. Rod, thank you. Uh, I believe we just lost data. The city is Valdosta. Okay, read you, babe. Yep. Okay, uh, loud and clear. VERP 74 coming down. Flight, we have static data. Roger. Starting. Okay, copy Go ahead, that, uh, Jack. Let's who oh, really choppy and, uh, I'll be ready for your hopefully it's update. loading a whole bunch of Florida cities or something okay yeah it's probably doing something Charlie. like that Charlie. boy I wish that process could be a little bit smoother okay I think we're through it's almost like entering render range of some big station or something whenever it tries to load cities but it loads cities like a hundred miles in advance we can sort of see uh, what's what we have here eagle's nest interesting well anyway randomly clicking isn't going to help yeah we want to verify we have a good data flight before we do it again yep and Carl, you got good data now we got high bit rate at uh, Honeysuckle here, but we're dropping out. How's your signal strength, Inco? Flight Inco, looks like we got solid uh, high bit rate here. Okay, Capcom, why don't you... Hey, guidance, you ready for the Verb 74 now? News, we're locked on solid flight. Okay, Odyssey Houston, we're locked on solid high bit right now. We uh, repeat the verb 74 and our Capcom, hold the verb 74 again. Uh, drop Be light that, hold the verb 74 one minute, wait. And Co, we're either going to have to select a different attitude or we're going to... You think we'd have solid low bit rate? And Co, let's go over to low bit rate, see if we can get it in solid. Okay, Capcom, there's sort of a seam in the... Okay, photo scenery there and I think that's the border between Georgia and Florida actually it might actually be like that uh, I mean you know people just grow a whole lot of trees on the Florida side of the state border I don't know maybe You're looking good on the ground, Odyssey. Just out of the breaker, right? Well, we don't call for it. And I think the reason you don't read voltage is that uh, if the circuit breaker that we have called has been out. All right. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 140 hours, 37 minutes now into the flight. Nope, oh, no, we don't want to actually go below 10,000 for now. 18,623 nautical miles from Earth. We're almost. And with a velocity of uh, 14,144 feet per second. This is Apollo Control. Odyssey Houston, the uplink is going well. We have one more load to get in. Okay, real fine. Uh, the 
Still wants to go down a bit. We are more than halfway to Tampa. We're about to cross Interstate 10. You can sort of see the intersection there, I think. Now they're getting alarms. Don't you hate when they get alarms at critical times? He did not set the bit procedure flight the rest of the rest of that trip flight. Okay. Say again. Needs to set the rest match flight of the drift flight for the rest. How does he use the uh has he set the uh drift flight and the rest of the flight over? Odyssey Houston. You were noisy, I didn't copy. Have you set the drift and rest man flag? Guys, aren't you doing it now? Just got data back. Right. Jack Swiger, he yeah, reported a 220 alarm. Right. Uh, well, this indicating that the uh, IMU uh, is not aligned. We're at 140 hours, uh, 45 minutes Looks into the like flight. Uh, we show Apollo uh, 13 at 17,461 nautical miles away at uh, the present. Now traveling at a speed of uh, 14,552 feet per second. Apollo 13 now 54 minutes away from the time of uh, lunar module jettison. I think we have about an hour's worth of audio if we want to get to where they get to parachute deployment or something like that, at least. So we'll see if I can kill enough time. <laughs> This plane is capable of going past Mach 1, and 
Our fuel consumption is fairly low, but I could probably put it in afterburners and it, well, it lasts longer than the F-35 did. Because it is, after all, a very lightweight plane that doesn't consume a whole lot of fuel. It can only barely pass Mach 1, though. And I think the creators suggested turning on the experimental flight model to make that happen, otherwise it might have more trouble. I haven't got uh, an experimental flight model on because it caused problems with other planes. Right now we're at the tepid Mach 0.53, so going very fast at all. Because again, I'm just taking a leisurely approach. The one thing that annoys me is I don't think the nozzles should look like that. I don't know. I'll have to take a look at pictures. Maybe they do, but it looks suspicious to me. Oh, I missed what they were saying that about. That explains their excitement. Always like that proper alignment. Uh oh, we got a little bit more choppy. Probably loading something else now. Okay. Alright. I think we're through that bit. <laughs> well, we apologize. Uh, we're an salt now, Mike. Roger. Just take your time, uh, Jim. We've got time now. Okay. 
Oh, 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 I wanted to Sorry, leave it in that position. Okay, uh, Houston, why can't I uh, uh, stay and take that hold uh, for uh, the uh, lab attitude hold? Uh, how about, stand by in it. How about you, Control? Is he talking at, uh, for Jettison? Yes. Yes, I would assume so. That's fine with me. The checklist is set up for uh, AGS. Uh, how about why I did, man? The problem is that uh, we got a narrow dead band in the pings right now, 1.4 degrees. Is he talking about the uh, maneuver now, or is he talking about after he gets into altitude? Uh, I'm talking about after. No, no, stop. It. Trying to wander to the right there. Still following the interstate, of course. You can see that. A whole bunch of lakes in front of us. Tough to see exactly. Some of them have a lot of stuff on them. Roger that. Just stay out of Gimbal Lock and then 45 degree. He's going away now, Mike. Is it critical? Is Bevel Heights, I guess. A lot of other town names around here, too. Daysville. Omni Charlie, Captain. Odyssey Houston, request Omni Charlie. Okay, going Omni Charlie. Thank you. Okay, good. Ring 150 copy, what was the other? At 42. Got it, thank you. What did you say? Okay, uh, Houston, Aquarius, I'm at the left step attitude and I'm planning on bailing out. Stand by one. Okay, I got it. Can't think of a better idea, Jim. I will go to Ag, that hole that you want me to. Uh, we recommend that hold that now. Stand by, Stand by Capcom. Go ahead, Blake. You want to go to Ag that hold now? 
Apparently still okay, further away anymore. from Tampa than I thought we were. You can see uh, the NASA shuttle landing facility okay, where we're eventually going to land area. over there. And there's the Orlando area right here, which we'll try and fly over. Five, but we're going to go to Tampa six, first and five, then cut five, our way across. Four point six. Six Alpha, 4.3. Six Bravo, 4.3. Charlie, 3.6. 6 dog, 3.6. Okay, copy that, no complaints. How do you like those DNC? Two of all the Lennon Bear flights, we might think about this in a minute. Okay, we're ready to proceed with hatch closeout. Okay, uh, did Jim get the film out of Aquarius? Yeah, we, uh, you mean the, the film we took this morning? That's the firm. Yes, we've transferred that. Okay, good deal. Uh, Jack, uh, let me mention something about the uh, the hatch integrity check. You're going to vent the tunnel until you get a 3 PSI Delta P. That should take 9 or 10 minutes, and it's our uh, firm feeling that you don't have to wait another okay. 10 control. minutes after that uh, for we a leak check. If, a, it, if uh, it holds pressure for a minute or so, or even gets down there, you know you've got a good hatch. GNC Early about 30 minutes okay, from separation here. Don't expect you to okay. pull off any hot fire tool then. This is the city of Ocala. Quite a ways off. Control Houston, uh, 141 hours, 8 minutes uh, now to the flight. Apollo 13, presently 14,468 nautical miles out from Earth. All three crewmen. He hasn't got it south. Now he hasn't got it south. Okay. We're going to have to Jim install take the, the hatch. Limb to the we show uh, three, two we gave minutes, on the limb jettison pad. 40 seconds off our off away from scheduled time. He's hit the flight. He's going to jettison the jettison. service module in the north. I mean, the limb in the north. We don't want it to the north. We want it to the south. He's 90 degrees out in pilot. In the outer plane direction to the south instead of the north instead of the south. Right. I'm sure they're probably closed up by now. So we already told him that the yaw wasn't critical. Uh, well, okay, but I'm talking about REM roll. How does this change your footprint? Well, I'm, you know, that's, that's, it doesn't that's change your I'm footprint. About. It changes where the limb's going to land relative to his footprint. Can you show me where it is? The, uh, the, the atomic fuel cap, is that right? I'm not worried about that. We're just worried about just the fact that the limb is going to go to the north, and so is he initially. Just a sec, why? Let me check something. Don't you think you're going to have adequate separation by that time, Fido? Right, Retro. So, Retro. Look, at, if he's closed out, let's let him alone. He'll the be problem behind. is the yeah, command module thrusters out. can't control okay. both the command module we'll and the LEM, they which they're they trying to get rid of. They really needed to use the LEM okay, to we'll turn fine. everything around properly if they were going to orient it a certain way. So, so if they've already closed the hatch to the LEM, then they really can't do anything more about that. But I have no idea why they ended up in the wrong position anyway. So, should have figured it out already. So this city that we're flying over is Marion Oaks. There's also a Danks Corner in Pedro. I don't know. I just I'm just reading what they say on the map. Fido for flight. Go ahead, flight. Just out of curiosity, are you? I assume you're not time critical in jettison. So if the crew comes up and are ready to uh, separate from the limb here, we'll get yeah, fired. Yeah, with this attitude, the earlier the better. Okay. So we'll stand by and find out when they're closed up. I copy that. Flight. Uh, 
Body well, gun. we might be pressurizing a lot of the system that was not pressurized. Body gun. So, uh, Joyce, you expect to chase a lot of seconds. Stand by one. Okay, uh, take a good look at cabin. Well done. Body camp. Oh, he Might check the direct O2 if I can the building a little. Roger. Got time. Check their direct O2. Uh, Odyssey Houston, just it's verify your direct O2 is okay. off. Over. Coming down. Apparently just pressurizing the cabin point. Okay. Yes, sir. That's verified. Okay. And, and uh, the, uh, it's dropping now, Joe. Uh, Raj, we think you were just pressurizing the cabin up to the, that regulator's particular spec. Odyssey Houston. Go ahead. Okay, uh, we're observing uh, middle gimbal angle getting a little bit high. The limb appears to be dead banding okay with any attitude, but just wanted you to know that we're keeping an eye on it, and if, if it does get too high, we might want you to punch off early. Okay. And uh, verify that the hatch is uh, secured and that you are venting the tunnel over. Now that's well, we've got yeah, a lot of clouds here. Real good, real good. Uh, let's start going down a bit. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 141 hours, uh, 16 minutes uh, into the flight. Apollo 13 now 13,283 nautical miles away from Earth, with a velocity of building up now to uh, 16,350 uh, feet per second. Okay, uh, Joe, uh, since we're ahead of the timeline, can I proceed on and uh, kind of punch off early, or do you want me to punch off at exactly one hour? Uh, Jack, when you are comfortably ready to punch off, you can go ahead and do it. Raj, GNC, you don't want to test fire here before we punch off, do you? That was Jack Swigert uh, receiving uh, confirmation from the ground uh, from Joe Kerwin that uh, he can jettison the lunar module. Let's see, do we have air brakes? Yes, we do at the bottom. Well, we're going faster than we should, but what the hey. You don't think this is going to set up any problems in the left, do you? Negative flight, do you? Go, GNC. That's going to drive our middle gimbal in a little bit. Okay. Let's just punch off early. Okay, all flight controllers going around the horn to uh, separate from the limb here. Retro? Go. I don't. Go. Guide so control. Go. Telemio? Go. GNC? Go. Oh. Okay, Ecom. Go. Surgeon? Go. Watch off early. Raj. Inco, how about you? We're go flight. Raj. Capcom, we're clear to separate at the crew's discretion. Odyssey Houston, uh, we just had a, a formal uh, go for limb jet at your convenience, over. Okay, thanks, Joe. Okay. It'd be really funny if they had already done it. <laughs> Flight GNC. Go, GNC. We got that off now. All he has is the cell command for control. Yeah, let's. Capcom, that's a good point. Why don't we hold off on that temporarily? Flight again. Calling flights again. Yeah, we can come on with the BMAGs now. Okay. Why don't we bring the BMAG on and let them warm up a bit before we punch off the Capcom? Okay, Odyssey Houston. No. We're ready for you to bring the BMAGs on and warm up, and uh, all other things being equal, uh, we'd like you to go through to Lem Jetta on the uh, checklist you've got. That's BMAG 1 only, bud. Okay. And that is okay, BMAG we'll 1. Okay, will do. That's BMAG 1 now, as, as you know. Yeah, BMAG 1 is in warm up. Good deal. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 141 hours, uh, 20 minutes now into the flight. Uh, while we're standing by, uh, we'll pass along some uh, updated numbers uh, from uh, the uh, retro fire officer. We uh, show time. The road to our right is not okay, Interstate 75. That's here. off to the uh, left somewhere. Hours, uh, I have departed from it a seconds. bit. Blackout begins at uh, plus 18 seconds from time okay, of entry Houston, interface. Uh, do you have a command module wait for me? 
standby one, Jeff. Retro, you got a DAP load for the... Uh, it's Broad Street. street. Seems flight. pretty broad to me. It's so, so I think a Highway 45. At, uh, 3 minutes 23 seconds. Uh, from time, time of entry interface. Entry DAP initialization. 62 and hit your final proceed there, right? Odyssey, Houston. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I'm reminded that the uh, entry DAP is all you've got. It'll initialize itself and uh, you, won't have an, you won't have an RCS DAP, so you don't have to fool with it. Okay. Drogue deploys at 8 minutes 16 seconds. Main chutes deploy at uh, 9 minutes uh, 4 seconds from time of entry uh, interface. Predicted time of splash, uh, 14 minutes 1 second from time of entry interface. Standing by, continuing to monitor. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 141 hours, 22 minutes into the flight. Uh, we show Apollo 13 presently at an altitude of 12,474 nautical miles and a speed of 16,761 feet per second. GNC, how's your configuration? Looking for separation here. GNC flight. How's your configuration looking for okay, Joe, uh, separation uh, here? Okay, Joe, I've got your checklist out there on the SDS okay. power up. That's affirmed. Okay, I'm coming down here to a step that says FDAI power off. Uh, is, that, is that what you want right now, I guess? Huh? Go ahead. Okay, Jack, uh, that's so the FDAI power yeah, off. Stop the uh, momentary power glitches and you uh, bring up the no team and put it on. Turn and, uh, power and power you turn right around and put the FDAI power right back on one. Okay. Okay, I don't have the BMAG temp light out yet. Do you want me to go ahead and uh, put the BMAG on with the temp light still on? GN6. We can uh, go ahead and okay. uh, you'll have a, a good stable rate. All right, let's do it. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 141 hours, uh, 24 minutes now on the flight. The uh, flight surgeons uh, monitoring their consoles are taking readings on uh, Jack Schweigert and Fred Hayes. Okay, we are on, on the outskirts uh, of the Tampa Bay area. Slightly higher uh, than average, indicating uh, an increased workload. We now show Apollo 13 at 12,064 nautical miles away from Earth. Speed continuing to build up, now reading 16,989 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Flight final. Uh, reviewing the checklist here, we see that on that LEM jettison pad, we had, as you know, we've given them some angles to go to, which they weren't at. We had also given them a corresponding set of CSM gimbals, which could be used for a backup GDC align. I think the checklist shows the GDC align. Being that the okay, Houston, is not uh, in we'll attitude, punch off at uh, 141 plus 30. Okay, they did not do the a GDC control. align to those gimbal angles that we sent them. Okay, okay. Roger. That was Jack Swigert uh, well, indicating that they plan to jettison the lunar right. module in uh, Capcom, about three minutes from this time. Further GDC align. Um, do you expect they'll be aligning to the gimbal angles we gave them the lemon jettison pad? Negative flight. I didn't think so. That's good flight. They're okay to GDC align to the uh, IMU. Lots right. of those poles for some reason. Control Houston, uh, 141 hours, uh, 28 minutes into the flight. Apollo 13, now uh, 11,590 nauti uh, nautical miles away from Earth. For re-entry, uh, the three crewmen uh, will uh, be traveling in uh, a shirt sleeve environment, not in their space suits. We're standing by now for uh, reports of jettison of the lunar uh, module. At uh, 141 hours, 28 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, uh, Houston, do we have a go for Okay, we'll go lower. Uh, 
Odyssey Houston, uh, we can give you one uh, if you'll put the logic on for us momentarily. Uh, Odyssey Houston, uh, we can give you a go if you'll put the logic oh, on it. momentarily. No, I'll go logic faster. Okay, <laughs> the next logic is on. Okay, Capcom, we're go for fire and, uh, you are not go too much fire faster. On. There is Real an fire. indicated airspeed limit. Uh, I think I see Tampa over there. We are giving St. Petersburg a miss, sorry, St. Petersburg peoples. Well, we can see the Tampa airport in front of us. We are not landing at that. Up too high again. So we will then follow okay, Highway 4. Well, up, 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 back down, back down. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 141 hours, 31 minutes into the flight. Uh, we've had lunar module Jackson. Okay, uh, hello Tampa. Aquarius. Well, Aquarius sure got a workout. Cruise ship there. Yep, this is actually the wrong highway. The one we want is the one off to Apollo the Control left there. Houston, uh, 141 hours, uh, 35 minutes now to the flight. Uh, we have a report from recovery that uh, Samoa rescue aircraft uh, 1, 3, and 4 are now en route to their uh, respective stations. I should note the PAO C names aircraft. the people in, uh, involved in the rescue operations. Five and goes at length uh, up range. crediting them but I cut that out I would normally have kept it in but I wanted to cut down on the time on the audio Odyssey Houston go ahead okay Jack uh, We'll have a pad for you in a few minutes. Uh, we're getting data now on the tracking, and uh, although we oh, we got a bit of a rudder shimmy. Will be very small. We better get a move on, on, or the sun's uh, gonna set on me. Don't know about the rudder shimmy. It's Apollo Control, hmm. Houston. Uh, 141 hours, uh, 40 minutes uh, now to the flight of Apollo 13. Apollo 13, trying to deliberately use the rudder to stop from wiggling, but it's just going to wiggle, I guess. Uh, with a velocity uh, now reading 18,504 feet per second. We have a report that the lunar module is continuing to hold altitude uh, the way it should. Uh, cabin pressure is holding, and uh, here in Mission Control, we'll continue uh, uh, to track the uh, lunar module Aquarius until it... Uh, 
We're at uh, 141 hours, uh, 41 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. It's Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 141 hours, 44 oh. minutes. Uh, Suddenly got mission. smoother with the change in the Apollo cloud layer. Presently, uh, and the lighting. Of 9,102 nautical miles uh, from Earth and with a velocity rating uh, 18,952 feet per second. Odyssey Houston, over. Go ahead, Roger. Okay, Jim, the cabin is looking real good. We recommend you uh, turn the suit compressor to off now, over. Go on off. Capcom, they can also tell this power is looking real good, too. Say again, Flight. They can tell this power looks pretty good, too. Boy, it's nice and quiet in here. Okay, real good. Incidentally, your power is looking real good also, Jim. Thank you. Okay, here's the noise coming. We're over okay. Plant City. It's back. That's what zero, it's called. Zero, zero. One, five, two. Zero, zero, zero. Plant City. One, four, two, three, eight. One, niner. One, seven, eight. And you recall that GET moon set and moon check attitude. Down 61. Minus 2166. Minus 16537. 052. 36211. 620. 1119R7. 2-9-1 The next four are in slash A D-0 is 400 0-2-2-0 0-0-1-9-0 0-3-3-8 Zero seven five niner. <coughs> the rest of the pad is in slash A for this one. Lift up. You are lift vector up at the very bottom. And the uh, remarks all remain the same. If you want me to copy them, uh, let me know. Otherwise, you can read back. Over. Okay. Uh, entry pad as follows. Lift back. Zero 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 one five two zero 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 one four two three eight one nine. 178 We're over Lakeland now. There are many lakes and in some cases trees in the middle of the lake which I don't know whether they're supposed to be there or not but they're there but definitely lakes. Lakes are involved. Appropriately named Lakeland. Of course a lot of cities in Florida could be called Lakeland, so there is that. Uh, okay, Jim, that's a, a tiny hair shallower than we had you before, but it's based on solid tracking, uh, and it still is uh, lift vector up comfortably. Doesn't feel like it ought to be this dark when the sun's at that angle, but okay. Maybe it's just the uh, clouds blocking the sun's control. rays. Just, uh, 141 hours, 53 minutes uh, now into the flight. Lots and lots of lakes. Our, uh, final pad, uh, shows that We're on our way to Orlando, of course. Entry interface, 142 hours, uh, 40 minutes, uh, 46 seconds. Began blackout at. Uh, plus 19 seconds from uh, time of entry interface uh, into blackout, uh, 3 minutes mm. uh, 38 seconds. Time of uh, drogue deploy from entry interface uh, plus uh, 7 minutes uh, 59 seconds. Main chute deployment uh, plus 8 minutes 46 seconds from time of entry interface. Uh, predicted time of splash 
13 minutes uh, 44 seconds uh, from time of entry interface. We're now at uh, 141 hours 54 minutes into the mission, uh, continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 141 hours, 55 minutes uh, into the flight of Apollo 13. At present, uh, we're now feeding a uh, downrange uh, picture uh, of the recovery uh, on the NASA closed circuit television circuit. Further report uh, from recovery, all recovery aircraft, uh, the C-130s are airborne, and helicopters uh, one and two with swimmers are airborne and proceeding to station at this time. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 141 hours, uh, 56 minutes into the flight of Apollo 13. How you doing in your state vector, guys? Waiting for a phone. We have okay. one out there now. You say you're going to send a clock in from a clock or something and a civil bias. Okay. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 141 hours, uh, 56 yeah, minutes flight. into the flight. Apollo 13, now 7,084 nautical miles away from Earth. Velocity increasing, uh, presently reading 20,770 feet per flight. second. Further report uh, okay, from recovery. Uh, continuing to run the, uh, of both Orion aircraft are airborne uh, and no, on station. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 141 hours, 57 minutes into the flight. Uh, recovery report Apollo Control Houston, uh, 141 hours, 59 minutes, or correction, 142 hours now into the flight. We show Apollo oh, 13 uh, at an altitude of 6,613 uh, nautical miles away. Okay. Velocity uh, really beginning to build up now, now reading uh, 21,227 feet per second. We show uh, to bring BMAG two on the 40 minutes from time of re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. So we're approaching Orlando, sort of at the outskirts here. Okay, Capcom, we'd also like to accept. Oh, this is a better Go view. Go ahead. Okay, Jack, we'd like to accept for your final state vector. There'll also be another uh, two that you might tell him. Uh, Roger. Capcom, we're also giving him a tip of bias update and clock increments, so uh, we'll tell him when we he can have the computer back. And Odyssey Houston, uh, we're also sending you a final tip of bias update and clock increment, over. Okay, fine, thank you. We shall How does the level look like uh, all I've heard was that it's uh, that the cabin was holding pressure. Uh, I haven't heard anything more. What was the question, Captain? You said, "What did the limb look like?" How's the limb looking? And, uh, Odyssey, uh, holding up. Fine. We're ready for you to uh, warm up you, the control. BMAG number twos at Roger. your uh, discretion, and we're curious whether the moon check attitude is uh, is good. Over. Yeah, Joe, it's uh, coming down. I got just. Oh, we can see Orlando in front of us. And, uh, coming on down. Roger that. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston, uh, 142 hours, uh, three minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, we presently show on one of our displays uh, splash coordinates of uh, 21 degrees, uh, 39 minutes south, 165 degrees, uh, 23 minutes west. Apollo 13 now at an altitude of 5,862 uh, nautical miles, a velocity now reading uh, 22,085 feet per second. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 142 hours, uh, 7 minutes uh, now to the flight of Apollo 13. 
Odyssey now uh, 34 minutes away from time of entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Mission Control has just passed a computer update uh, to the onboard uh, CMC. And as you heard Joe Kerwin's uh, last uh, report to the crew, uh, telling them that the computer now belongs to them. Flight retro. We're at uh, 142 okay, hours, okay, 7 minutes, continuing to monitor. This okay. is Apollo Control. Yeah. Right. We're coming down to about 38 Okay, Jack, sounds real good. Hmm, serious lag here in Orlando? Apollo Control at uh, 142 hours, 8 minutes uh, now into the flight. Well, Apollo 13, I guess that'll help. Be, uh, 5, uh, miles some things Earth. disappear. Velocity now reading, uh, I guess we'll take it. Feet per second. We're uh, 33 minutes away from time of entry. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Odyssey Houston. Go ahead. Okay, we'd like the S band power amplifier to off center at this time, Jim. Off center. Yes, sir. Okay, you're still looking real fat on, uh, on power. Okay, uh, downtown Orlando, obviously. Uh, if you do get into a bind and uh, don't come up with that damp hours. Don't come up with uh, re recovery. You can always power down, and uh, you can always put the pyro battery. On. And that's Orlando Executive Airport okay. in front of us. It's Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, oh, let's not go down into it. Hours, 14 minutes down to the mission. Apollo 13, presently uh, 4,075 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity. Uh, now showing 24,619 feet per second. We're less than uh, 27 minutes now from time of entry uh, into the Earth's atmosphere. Joe, are you uh, planning to run us all the way down without the suit pressure? Say again, Jack. Can you plan to turn on the suit compressor at all uh, on the way down? Uh, like, well, that's a negative, Jack. I'll verify it, but I sure don't think so. Yeah, he can cycle okay, it. Okay, that's all right, Captain, he can cycle it 10 minutes if he wants to. But it's all right without him. Right. Okay, Jack, this is Houston. Uh, we've got power, and you can cycle it for 10 minutes if you uh, so desire, but we don't think you need to do it. Over. Okay, well, we'll hold on. Okay, real fine. How'd the EMS check? Well, we've got a choice of two EMS roads okay. to go east. I think I'll go with Roger. Highway 528, which is to our Apollo right. Control, Houston, uh, 142 hours, 17 minutes uh, now to the mission. Our digital display uh, presently shows Apollo 13 at 3,505 nautical miles away from Earth. Now traveling at a speed of 25,693 feet per second. The interface minus 19 is uh, P61. Looks like the next thing we'll see there is P61. Confirm it should be uh, four minutes. About four minutes. Jack Swigert uh, confirms that the uh, EMS check uh, went well, which uh, provides a good backup monitor for checking the guidance and navigation uh, system performance. Uh, we're at uh, 142 hours, 18 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, Joe, are you watching uh, you and Fido taking a look at our down uh, 60 here? Uh, that's affirmative. Hold it for just a second. We're looking at uh, 6.13 and uh, 4.80. Uh, I'll get a check on that. How's that looking, guidance? Yes, the that looks good, flight. Okay, Captain, we're happy with it. Uh, Jack, Fido says that's okay. Okay. That's what we predicted. Computer uh, they sure is. Apollo Control, uh, that was a reading uh, from the uh, onboard computer displays uh, showing uh, that looks good. A velocity at uh, 
Entry of uh, 36,211 uh, feet per second. Feet per second. It has to be feet per second. They calculate distance in miles, or nautical miles, and then give us the speed in feet per second. show Apollo 13 at a distance of uh, 2,581 okay, uh, nautical Houston, miles. Uh, just for your information, uh, it looks as though Battery C will uh, deplete around main shoot time. That's expected. You've got plenty of amp hours in the other batteries. Decom can fly. Can we can leave it on if you want. Yeah, why don't we? We now show a velocity of uh, 27,553 feet per second. Uh, at uh, 142 Wait, hours, 24 yeah, minutes. Checklist page 2-5, delete power PMP off. Okay. You okay. want to delete power PMP off? Yeah, that way we'll have uh, voice post block up. Okay, copy that. Yep, Tom, Tom, take my look. Flight, Fido. Go, Go ahead, Tom, take All right, sir, one minute to hand over. Okay. Flight, this data still looks real good. Raj. Flight network. Go network. 30 seconds to site handover. Capcom, we're about 30 seconds to site handover. You may advise Odyssey, the crew. Houston, over. So we'll start at the south end of the full right, complex. Yeah, Capcom. Odyssey, Houston, over. Go ahead. At okay, the actual Cape Canaveral. Head, but I was a little late on the, uh, on the ball. Uh, since we're fat on power and we'd kind of like to have S-Band with you after blackout, uh, I hope there's not we, too we, we much by way of clouds. The step on your uh, entry checklist, page 2-5, after begin blackout, that says power... PM so, PM approaching PM Merritt PM Island. PM okay. Okay. We're now reading uh, the onboard uh, computer display, which shows... Uh, present velocity of 29,160 feet per second. This is what the crew is reading out. A range to go distance of uh, 4,984 nautical miles. We're at uh, 142 hours at 26 minutes into the flight. Uh, we show 14 and a half minutes uh, from time of entry interface. Thirteen minutes uh, now from predicted time of entry. Uh, the onboard computer shows a velocity of uh, 30,113 feet per second. A range to go distance of 4,683 nautical miles. Retro fire officer has just reported to Flight Director Gene Kranz. We look Flight, real good Don't here. Tell You've lost the lamp. Flight GNC. Go GNC. The last couple of biases we had looked real good, and the RCS usage is... Tell them you uh, has just reported to Flight Director Gene Kranz that uh, we have now lost tracking on uh, lunar module Negative. Aquarius. I doubt it. Negative. Capcom. Roger. Eleven minutes away now from uh, time of entry interface. Uh, on board uh, displays show a velocity of uh, 31,141 feet per second. A range to go distance of uh, 4,332 nautical miles. We're at uh, 142 hours, 30 minutes into the flight of Apollo 13. Odyssey, Houston, over. Go ahead. Okay, currently over Merritt Island. Head towards Port Canaveral. Uh, 
trajectory and a minute ago we just lost contact uh, with I only remember if we did any sort of okay. sightseeing on the first Where'd flight oh I know she's up there somewhere my network Hey, just as I said that, we got another burst of LEM data, so I guess it's still ticking. Right, retro. No retro. Send him a letter after he does. Okay. Nine minutes now from uh, time of entry interface. Uh, the onboard computer now reading a velocity of 32,193 feet per second. A range to go right, distance of uh, 3,919 uh, uh, nautical miles. Odyssey Houston, your disky is doing all the right things. The GNN is go over. Okay, thank you. Okay, so to our right is Cocoa Beach. In front of us is Port Canaveral. Say again, Jack. And we'll turn towards Cape Canaveral yep, Air Force Station. Right which is going to be to our left. That's the nicest thing anybody's ever said. Oh, I missed what the nicest thing anybody has ever said Cap is. Capcom Joe Kerwin, in addition to being a, an astronaut, is also a medical doctor. Oh, right, he, he is. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be, be a wild one. Less than uh, seven minutes now from time of... Uh, Entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Onboard display now shows uh, a velocity of uh, 33,383 feet we'll, per uh, second. We'll, we'll cover for you guys in a check. Got any phone numbers he wants us to call while like passing down? Range, right, range to go now, uh, 3,271 uh, nautical miles. We're uh, six minutes now from time of re entry in the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, so some of the older launch complexes Five and the skid strip. Into the Earth's atmosphere. Um, okay, now like a velocity of 34, Probably shouldn't have houses all over them. <laughs> Definitely shouldn't have houses all over them. That's a moon track attitude, I think. Right? Yeah. How about you, Ecom? Looks good here, Flight. Raj, how about you, guidance? We're going fine. Flight Director Gene Kranz now going uh, around the room, uh, pulsing his right. okay, flight Cap control Tom, team as to status. Odyssey Houston, over. Go ahead. Okay, we just had one last uh, time around the room, and everybody says you're looking great. <laughs> as if there was any chance for no go. Oops, let's abort re-entry. No, that can't Four happen. To go now for, uh, yeah, interface. definitely should not be any houses here. Uh, 34,802 uh, feet per second. Range to go uh, 2,625 uh, nautical miles. Still receiving onboard uh, data. Still looking good. I wonder if Three those custom ortho packs, the US ortho photos that are available uh, by Forkboy have the house issue fixed or not. Not sure. I mean in this area, obviously. Capcom, you might as well bid him adieu here at LOS and tell him we'll be talking to him over the Orion next. Yes, let's have him go on Army Charlie yet. At entry attitude for the uh, recovery force. Right. Okay. Charlie, so we can see the VAB Charlie, there. The LOS, uh, this is some. Uh, this is a freeware a custom scenery pack that has the VAB and some of these launch complexes. Odyssey I wish I had an exclusion Go for ahead. the okay, LOS, residential and, buildings. Uh, a minute or a minute and a half. Uh, uh, at entry attitude, we like Omni. I mean, Charlie. at least here it does. And welcome home. Over. Well, okay, at least on the pad. There's still ago, some uh, suspicious homes right there. Velocity now reading uh, 35,646 feet per second. Uh, range to go uh, 1,961 nautical miles. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we've just had loss of signal uh, from uh, Honeysuckle. Uh, with Apollo 14, the last velocity okay, reading uh, was uh, 35,000. So in front of us are launch complex 39A and 39B. 1,791 nautical miles. Roger, on your flight, Retro. Go ahead. 
Okay, last data we got, we predict and and of course the crawler waves. 165, 22 west. 165, 22 west. That's a firm. Flight network. Go network. Flight up. LOS. That's black out here. We should be go to Orion. Okay. Apollo 13 uh, should have entered uh, the Earth's atmosphere at this time. Moments ago, we had a report uh, from uh, the retro fire officer that uh, based on uh, his data, predicted uh, set of coordinates uh, for a splash of uh, 21 degrees, uh, 39 minutes south, uh, 165 degrees, 22 minutes west. Okay, the VAB such as it is. The uh, period of blackout uh, for the spacecraft uh, should have begun about uh, 20 some odd seconds ago. Okay. Apollo Control Houston. Um, Apollo 13 should be coming up on Max G right now. Our last estimate uh, for Max G was 5.2 Gs. We have about a minute and a half to go uh, during this period of blackout. Okay, well, looks like I've delayed just Air enough, hopefully. The, uh, scene from the recovery, uh, ship Iwo Jima has been I've cut out the silences, so the events will seem a little bit faster than they really were. We have about one minute to go now from uh, time of end of blackout. Alright, Retro, we ought to be out of blackout in about 30 seconds. Raj, we'll try shortly. Okay, time to about get into the cockpit. To go, uh, for blackout. Less than 10 seconds now, uh, we will attempt to uh, contact Apollo 13 uh, through one of the Araya aircraft. Continuing to monitor this Apollo Control Houston. Network, any reports of Araya acquisition yet? Not at this time, fine. Okay. Apollo 13 should be uh, out of blackout at this time. Uh, we're standing by for any reports of Araya acquisition. The Araya, uh, uh, C-135 type aircraft. Network, no Araya contact yet. None of this time, but you're Coming up now on three minutes are. until That's time of drogue okay. deployment. Standing by for any reports. We really didn't use Back that action. much fuel. I gotta double Black check the range on this thing. Garage. We've had a report that Araya 4 aircraft uh, has acquisition of signal. Capcom, why don't you try and give him a call? Just advise him, standing by. Odyssey Houston, standing by, over. Okay, go. There they are. Okay, we read you, Jack. That was uh, Jim Lovell responding with the OK Joe. Correction there, that was Command Module Pilot Jack Schwager. We're looking at the weather on TV, and it looks just as advertised. Looks like. Less than two minutes now from time of drogue deployment. Flight network. Go network. Oh, right, that's pretty good. Up, but he's remoting at this time. And he's also so uh, less than uh, a minute away now from uh, time of landing gear down. Why don't we wait until after uh, we get our main? Okay, okay. looks good. More rescue for four test band contact. Rog. Laps. Less than uh, 30 seconds away now from uh, drogue deployment. Uh, the uh, drogue deployment, these two chutes uh, will uh, provide um, braking and uh, stabilization prior to main chute deployment. Standing by now for d continuing to monitor. Okay, 
Capcom, why don't you give them a call, see if they can give us the uh, target latitude and longitude. Odyssey Houston, uh, standing by for your uh, noun 67. Uh, when you get it, over. Roger that. A report of uh, two good rogues coming up now for main shoots. Standing by for confirmation of uh, main shoots. Okay. All right, just on time. We show you on the mains. It really looks great. An extremely loud applause here in Mission Control. Control. Bring it. Apollo 13 on uh, main shoots comes through loud and clear on the television display here. Okay, we have completed our around the world in a plane trip with this T-38 back at Cape Canaveral. And there's really no taxiway until the very end of the shuttle landing facility. So I'm going to continue on down the runway. Just put in a call to Apollo 13. Apollo 13, Apollo 13, this is recovery, over. I did not cut out uh, this silence. We have a report uh, from the Iwo Jima that Apollo 13, uh, Apollo 13. at a distance of four Go miles ahead. from the ship. The smoke you see is uh, venting of RCS uh, propellants. Oh, uh, they have TV system on it, even. The runway lights just came on because it's getting dark, I suppose. Okay, I'm going to pause that audio. Uh, yep, yeah, we heard it. <laughs> okay, so we'll end it there. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and this series. I'll probably produce a, a more condensed version so that people who can't sit through hour-long flights can get the gist of things. Uh, people who are daunted by the length of the videos. So I will do that. But thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed the videos. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.